Hi, I'm Roger Sterling Soap. And I'm Mandy. And today we're going to talk about the different shave soap sizes that we have from sample to refill to full size jars. Coming right up. So when we first started making shaving soap, we initially were only making the refill pucks and the sample pucks. We didn't have shaving soap in a jar because the, the soap that I was using to shave with at the time um, came in puck form and a, a lot of soaps at that time only came in puck form so we designed our shaving soap to be a mug soap and I, I had just an old mug like this and the puck got dropped in and you'd work your lather up on, on the puck there. Um, a few years into starting to make the shaving soaps we started getting a lot of requests from customers hey can you have containers with your soap so we started selling containers you know, a la carte on the website but even then that wasn't enough people wanted the soap to be poured um, directly into the jar as had become the industry standard so in 2015 we got with Parkway jars uh, Parkway plastics I, I believe uh, out of Piscataway New Jersey and we started having them make our green jars that we're you know now really well known for throughout wet shaving and we started offering the shave soap in the jars so that right there that's kind of the answer to the question that we always get why are your refill pucks so much smaller than your jars well the parkway jar is pretty much the industry standard now you know, most um, of your more well-known wet shaving companies use the parkway jars for their uh, for their shaving soaps but we kept this as our puck size because we still have a lot of customers that have been with us for over a decade now that still use a shaving mug or a bowl and as we'll show you later our soaps are really malleable I mean you can mash them down pretty easily and Mandy will pan in on that and we'll do a a quick shot of that of how easy it is to, to mash one of these soaps into a bowl but that's why this the, the refill pucks don't match the size of the jar um, and the sample pucks they're you know they're bigger than the industry standard and we wanted it to be that way originally when we were doing these you know all of these were cut by hand and the, the samples are still cut by hand but we actually have a contraption that will take a you know a, a foot and a half long tube of soap and cut it down into refill pucks and then we have cheese slicers that we use to cut these you know further there's four samples from each you'll get from each refill puck um, and I'm glad we've got that contraption now because there used to be a huge variance in the size that you would get out of a refill puck and a sample because no matter how good you are when you're cutting everything by hand there's going to be variances so we get a lot of questions about the shrink film that's on the refill pucks and the sample pucks. It's a product called Biolefin. It begins to break down in about 18 months and is fully um, biomass in about three years. Three to five years, which reduces the time for it to break down by about 90% compared to a traditional shrink film. Um, but it also leads into another question. Sometimes we'll get questions on why does the soap in a jar smell slightly different than the same soap in a puck or a sample? The biolefin is micro perforated, so it allows free transfer of air. So even after this thing is wrapped, it will continue to cure on the shelf. Whereas this jar of soap, it cures for a number of weeks um, until it reaches a certain moisture content, then it's capped and labeled. And while it's perfectly fine to use, it's cured to the level we want it to be, the curing process is stunted once this cap goes on this jar while it continues here, and that can have an effect on scent. And what we always tell people is, if you notice a slight difference in the scent of your jar, take the cap off and just leave it off for a couple of days. Um, there's always, with soap, there's going to be a, a small amount of moisture that remains in here after your curing time, and um, with this cavity here it's going to lead to some off gassing and that's going to build up in here so if you come across something like that take the top off leave it on your counter it's not gonna it's not gonna have any type of negative effect on your uh, scent or it's not going to cause any scent loss it's just going to allow it a little extra cure time such as the puck has and it they should start to even out and smell 
When we first started Sterling Soap Company, we created our own labels, we created our own logo, and it was very... Um, rudimentary. Rudimentary. And over time, we realized that we wanted a more professional look, a more professional brand, and so we reached out to a uh, brand designer in L.A., and she completely redid our logo and completely redid our brand on the labels and made it look really professional. We also used to print labels in-house when we first started and uh, we quickly realized that once we rebranded that those labels weren't standing up, the, the in-house printed were not standing up to the, t the test of time um, in a wet environment such as a bathroom and we wanted something that represented the brand as professional, just like the, the brand designer had done for our labels and our logo. So we began to uh, get them printed through a, a label printing company, and that's where our labels come from. They are uh, waterproof um, varnish, except for the sample pucks and the refill pucks, they are in a, um, recycled material so that they're a little bit waterproof. You could get this wet and it's not going to bleed or fade, uh, but uh, they're not really meant to stand up to, you know, long-term, you know, storage in a bathroom kind of thing. Fun fact about the logo, the only thing on the new logo, and I'll, I'll have Mandy post a comparison, and so the only thing that you see in that comparison that is the same from our original logo is the tree. The tree is actually from a photo Mandy took when we were in Stirling, Scotland. Um, it's it's a tree in Queen Anne's Garden inside of Stirling Castle and it's the only thing that remains from our original logo. The mountains you see in the background on the original Stirling logo are meant to be the Scottish Highlands in the background of Stirling Castle but that mountain if you look closely is actually the mountains taken from a can of Coors Light. Um, and imposed onto our label. That's how terrible our original label was and how terrible I am at designing things. So I'm really happy with our, the way our label is now. It looks professional. Okay, so why, um, why do we continue to offer three different sizes of our shave soap? Um, because our customers want it, essentially. Um, I would love to go to nothing but jars because jars are the easiest thing to do. Um, there's much less labor cost involved, which is why on a per ounce basis, the samples and the refills um, cost more. The, the samples are the most labor intensive because you do have to cut this refill puck three more times to get four samples and then label, uh, shrink wrap and label each one of them. Um, but we have so many customers that love the fact that you can come and get a one ounce sample and try it out before buying a refill puck or, or spending $14 on a jar of soap. And this, I mean, this it's one ounce, over one ounce of soap. It's gonna give you a, month, a, a month's worth of shaves to begin with, which is plenty of time to decide, do I like a scent? Do I really like a scent? Am I gonna get really tired of this? We've also still have quite a few customers that use a shaving mug or some type of bowl and, and like to press these things down so I'm not going to take this away from them either. And the intent is really that once you use up a, a jar of soap that you can save the jar instead of throwing it in the trash and buying another jar, you can buy the refill pucks and smash it down and fill it up again. So that's what we're going to do right now. We're going to flash over and I'm going to show you how to get this where it fits inside of your four four inch jar okay so here we have just a puck of deep blue sea Boop. fits right in the mug now granted you'd be taking the uh obviously taking the label and then wrap off but it, it fit right in and you can start doing your lathering so we also have on the website we have these jars and they're most people just use them for the samples but the refill pucks these are our four ounce jars and they're a pretty good fit for the refill pucks as well. And finally, the one we always get the question about, our standard jars. So you've run out of soap here and you're wanting to refill this and you're thinking, hey, this doesn't work. 
It's going to go everywhere. Easy fix. So, I'm going to remove the wrap from this. And the soap's really malleable. I mean, it's, you know, we get questioned all the time, can I heat this in the microwave? No, absolutely not. You'll ruin the soap. This is not a melt and pour soap. It is, uh, it's actual cold, hot process soap. And melting it can not only affect the soap negatively, it can really have a del deleterious effect on the, on the scent. So keep this out of the microwave. Here's all you need to do. It's malleable. It's like clay. Take it. Press it down in the mug. There you go. Nothing to it. Okay, so the last thing we want to talk about is the coloring of the shave soaps. So essential oils, fragrance oils, a lot of them have color. We don't add any dyes to our soaps other than the dye that comes in um, scents like Island Man. And there's a slight amount of green dye that comes in. Um, with our sharp dress man, but it really doesn't show up in the soap. Um, but you have scents like Haverford, you have scents like Vanilla Sandalwood, Barbershop, Sterling Gentleman that have vanillin in them, or vanilla, there's the scent component being vanillin. Vanillin oxidizes as it's exposed to air, and we get this question on almost a weekly basis. Hey, I don't think my soap's mixed properly, it's all brown, but when I get into the inside, it's a more of a white cream color. That's simply the vanillin. It take it actually takes air or air actually making its way into the soap for it to start turning a brown color. Haverford's the, the darkest one we have. And if we break this sample open, or especially if you break open a refill puck or we're to scoop off the top layer of a shave soap jar, underneath it's going to be cream colored. Let that sit for a few days and then that layer will turn brown as well. It's perfectly normal. It's just the nature of, of vanilla and vanillin. It will happen to any soap that has that in there. The only caveat to the adding pigment to our soaps is uh, boat drinks. And when we first started making shave soap, we used to mix clay into all of them and we would we weren't looking necessarily at the properties of the clay and what it could do with your face or anything like that. We were specifically using them for their coloring. Um, but we also like the clay being, just clay in general, being in the soap. Um, over time, we went away from that. So we no longer add the clay into the soap with the one exception of boat drinks, which uses a French pink clay um, in it. And you can't tell because there's actually vanillin and some of the other components in the fragrance so it's actually a brown uh, color anyway but it does have the clay um, in it oh i'm sorry two caveats uh black ice and glacial obsidian which is pretty much the same just a different menthol level um, but that's an australian black clay and it's in there for the skin properties and because with the name like black ice and, and obsidian you, you it's got to be black the soap has to be black yeah so I hope we've answered, you know, just about any question that you could come across with in regards to the different sizes of the soaps and how we've got here. If you do have any more questions, by all means, put them in the comments down below and I promise I will answer them. And if you have any suggestions for what you'd like to see for the next video, put them in the comments below as well and, and we will get it done as fast as we can. Thank you for watching. Hi, I'm making my boots part. <laughs> oh gosh! We're gonna start like that. Oh gosh. <laughs> if I sit up tall like this, is it too much? No. I don't think you can see their expressions though. And I'm having trouble getting my left hand to turn the right direction so you can see his face. So here's the sad guy who owes money. And here's the angry guy who wants his money back. And he's like, where's my money? He's like, I'll get it to you next Tuesday. Not good enough. Oh, please, I got children. Oh. Oh. Let's go get a beer.